on problem number 15. Problem number 15. When it is noon Eastern Standard Time in New York City, it is 9 a.m. Pacific Standard. It is 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in San Francisco. Well, we know that there's a three-hour difference between New York and San Francisco. A plane took off from New York City at noon Eastern Standard Time. So it takes off from New York City, New York City, at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. What time is that in Pacific Standard Time? Well, they're three hours back, so that's also nine. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, a plane took off in New York City at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time and arrived at San Francisco at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So this is a.m. And so it goes, it goes to SFO, goes to San Francisco, where I live. I live a little south of San Francisco, but anyway. So it goes to San Francisco, and it's, uh, what time does it get there? It says 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we know New York is three hours ahead, so that's or Eastern Standard Time series, so that's also 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm an expert at this because we I work for a, a hedge fund where, where we, all we do is we schedule a lot of calls with company management, and they, they happen to normally not be in the same time zone as we are. So we're, we're pros at scheduling calls across time zone. So I'm, this is like second nature. I'm, I'm enjoying this problem more than most people. Well, back to the problem. If a second plane left San Francisco at noon Pacific Standard Time, so a second plane left at noon Pacific Standard Time, so 12, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and what is that? That's also 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and took the exact same amount of time for the trip, what was the arrival time in what was the arrival time Eastern Standard Time in New York City? So what time is it in Eastern Standard Time? So the first thing we just have to figure out is how long does the trip take? And then we do the second part. So how long did this trip take? This plane, 12, it left at 12 Eastern, arrived at 7 PM Eastern. So it took 7 hours. And that was easy, because we started from 12 and we went to 7, right? Similarly, if we're going to start, leave at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, because we want to stay in Eastern Time, because that's our final answer has to be Eastern Time. If we leave at 3 p.m. Eastern Time and take seven hours, we're going to get there at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is choice A. The trick of this problem is really just staying in one consistent time zone the whole time. You can stay in maybe the Eastern Standard Time the whole time. Next problem. Looks like I'll have to draw something. Draw this rectangle. I'll draw it in yellow. So let's say this is a rectangle, and then I'll I'll try my best to draw some of these these circles. So we'll we'll just look at the part that's inside of the rectangle. We'll just look at the because I don't feel like erasing all that other stuff. Well, this it's not perfect. These points touch, right? Actually, let me erase all that other stuff because it looks it's distracting. So I'll erase this. I'm trying my best to draw neat. Let me erase all of this, the rest of the circle, just so it doesn't distract you from what's already drawn there. Almost done. Sometimes I feel like that that guy who paints pictures on PBS because I spend so much time drawing these diagrams. But anyway. What's his name, Bob? Okay, so let's see. It's a. Uh, I was using yellow. Let me fill that in a little bit. Okay, and let's, what are the points that they draw? They say that this is point. That's point Q. Point P. Point T. Point R. Point S. In rectangle. P Q R S P Q R S above arcs Q T arcs Q T and R T are quarter circles with centers at P and S. Okay, so these are quarter circles with centers at P and S. If the radius of each circle is one, so you know the radius is one, so this is one, right? Because this is a radius. This is the radius of the circle. This distance is also one. What is the area of the shaded region? So all we have to do is we have to so the shaded region they drew the shaded region as this. That's the shaded region they did. 
So to figure that out, we just have to figure out the area of the larger rectangle, and then subtract out the areas of these quarter circles. So what's the area of this larger rectangle? Well, we know it's base, right? Because this, this distance is 1, this distance is 1. And we know in general that these, this radius is 1. This distance is 1, and also this distance is 1. So the entire rectangle is 2 by 1, right? This is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 by 1. So the area of rectangle, I'll call that area sub r, is equal to 2 times 1, 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. Now we just have to figure out the area of these quarter circles. So if I had a whole circle with radius 1, what would its area be? So it would be area is pi r squared. And if the radius is 1, area would be is equal to, well, pi times 1 squared is just pi, right? Pi times 1. So the area would be pi for a full circle, right? But so the area for a quarter circle, so just, you know, let me, I could do it in this color, let's see, I could do it in. The area of that blue right there, that will be, the area of that blue, area of blue would be pi over 4, right? Because it's a quarter circle. This is pi over 4. And similarly, this would also, this would, that one would also be another pi over 4. So the area of the shaded area would be the area of the rectangle, which is 2. That, that, you probably can't even see that blue. The area of the, of the rectangle is 2 minus the area of each of these quarter circles, minus pi over 4, minus pi over 4. And so this would be 2 minus pi over 2, I think, right? Pi over, right? 2 minus pi over 2 which is choice B. Next problem. Looks like more drawing for me. OK. So they, grew, they drew this graph, and I guess I will draw it too, because the whole point of what I'm doing is trying to explain to you how to draw these, how to, not draw these problems, how to do these problems. axes x and y and then the graph comes in like this then it dips down like this and then it goes up like this and they give us a couple of points on the graph they say that they say that this is the point here this is 0 comma 1 and they they say that this point right there is 1 comma 0 and they say the graph of y equals f of x is shown above. So this is y is equal to f of x. Which of the following graph, which of the following could be the graph of y? y is equal to f of x plus 2. So if you've, if you've done this in class, this is kind of a, a traditional shifting problem. So what you have to realize is in this type of, when you take x, x plus 2, before when you had, you know, let's say, when x let's put it this way when before when x and f of and y let's do x and y when x was equal to 0 y was equal to 1 right and when x is equal to 1 y is equal to 0 now what happens when x and y i want to i still want to input 0 into f of x right i still want to input 0 into f of x because f of 0 is going to be the same thing. But if I want to put 0 into f of x, I have to put a negative 2 in here, right? Now when x is equal to negative 2, then this expression here becomes 0, right? f of negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. So that, that's equal to the old f of 0. So then that equals 1. And if I wanted a 1 here, I would have to put a minus 1 in for x, right? Think about it. If I take a minus 1, and I input it into this expression, then I get f of 1, right? If I f of if I take if I f, f if I put minus 1, my phone is ringing and it's slightly distracting. But anyway, focus. I only have 30 seconds left. But f of minus 1, actually let me continue this into the next thing.